what's going on everyone you're welcome once again to david data channel on today's video i'm going to be walking you on how to set up your ci pipeline for dbt core project on one of our last videos we talked about how to do this on dbt cloud but today we're going to be focusing on dbt core so if you're a dbt core user and you like to set up your ci pipeline or learn how to set up your ci pipeline for a dbt core project then this video is for you If you're new to CI pipelines, don't worry. At the end of this video, you'll be able to build your first CI pipeline in DBT Core. Now, at the end of this video, we'll know we are successful if our pipeline kicks off a CI job that does three things. Number one, builds our models, tests our models, and also runs an SQL linter test for our SQL models. Just to backtrack, what is CI or continuous integration? First off, if you're a new viewer, hello. If you're a returning viewer, what's up? Thank you so much, guys, for coming. I'd like you to please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Also, the notification bell so you can notified once a new video drops in. Yeah, thank you so much. That's really, really important for us as it helps the algorithm to share this video to other people like you who would gain benefits from this video. Thank you so much. So, what is continuous integration? Continuous integration is a software development process that allows codes to be tested automatically before deployed into production. For data, CI helps us to ensure that bad data does not go into production and affect business users. So on your DBT core project, there are several ways you could um, set up your CI pipeline. Um, but for this video, we're going to be focusing on how to do this using GitHub actions, right? GitHub is readily available. Um, you can easily just set this up for a start for your DBT core project. All right, so um, I'm going to share my screen right now and then we'll jump right into it. All right, so I'm going to walk you through my DBT project my dbt core project and um, the necessary files you need for the project now first of first and foremost the file you need is um, you need this in the yaml file for your workflow for your github actions workflow and this will be in a folder called um, dot github slash workflows and you have your yaml file and yaml file is really where you're going to put your configurations for your ci job right so just like you have your dbt underscore project yaml file where you have your configurations for your dbt project or your profile CMO file where you have your configuration for connecting to your data warehouse in the same vein you have this um you can name the file whatever you want to name it but then you put it in your workflows folder in your dot github folder and that's how github actions will identify this file and run it as your ci job based on configurations you've set up in there we're going to walk through that configuration and so basically we call this our file our workflow our first dbt pr job and um, we said that this workflow is going to run on a pull request what types of pull requests open pull request reopen or synchronize already for review and then if there's a push request it's going to run um it's going to exclude um push requests from um the main branch right excluding that and then our jobs within the workflow we have our dbtci job and um, it creates a virtual environment called ubuntu latest and then we set up our connection details in the environment on um, GitHub action. So we have a, a, a secret called Snowflake account, Snowflake user, Snowflake rules, Snowflake DB, Snowflake private key, and Snowflake passphrase. Okay, and then we have the steps. So first off, um, there's a checkout action that checks out the code in your repo. And then you set up the Python environment. So Python 3.9.7 is installed into the environment. And then we install our requirements within that environment. In our requirement.txt file, we said we want to install dbt snowflake, latest snowflake version 1.9.0, and SQL fluff version 3.3.0. Right. And then we want to test our connection, dbt debug. And then we install any dependencies we have, dbt devs, and then build our model dbt build and then run our lint test and that is our ci pipeline all right so if we go to settings of our repo we'll go to security secrets and variables right so we click on that we click on actions and then we have the actions or the secrets that we highlighted here the snowflake account snowflake user snowflake rule snowflake db private key and passphrase so i'm using private private key key pair authenticator method not um, username and password authenticator methods for my snowflake instance on my dbt core 
so in here i put in all my secrets account db and all that and all that and all that every secret i'm using i just put it in here for the repo and then this is useful in here because that's how um our ci job would identify those parameters to connect to snowflake and then for our profiles of yaml files so typically your profiles of yaml file is put in your your dbt core or your local environment is somewhere in your system but for this is case since we are deploying deploying dbt core we want our project to be able to find the profile of yaml file which is what is going to use to connect to data warehouse and so that's why we've included this in our roots directory of our dbt project and so i'm now using um, um environment variables to reference these secrets i have assigned here so snowflake accounts snowflake db snowflake role snowflake user snowflake private key and snowflake private key passphrase so i set up the secrets on my github actions i'm referencing the secrets in my yaml in my ci job and then use virtual environment variables to um do that connection in my profiles.yaml file we have a video on environment variables you can check that as well in the link in the screen below or along this our uh, dbt playlist i think that is all and then we have our model so i just um added this model nothing really here and then use sql lint to fix the sql lint issues and so we are going to try to push this right now and see what happens to our pr when we create a pr um so i'm gonna add that git commit math model and i'm gonna push id from this branch so we can see this branch is four commits ahead let's compare and open a pull request so i'm going to create pull request so let's see what happens aha uh -huh. uh, so i still have my dbt cloud mci um, job still running so this is currently running and then this is also running as well so if i click on details of our job so we can see all the steps we highlighted on our file set up the job check out the code set up the python environment installing the requirements um, which is dbt core snowflake um dbt snowflake and then um sql fluff right so it installs requirement and then runs dbt debug to check our connection and connection is successful and then next one is to run dbt depths if there are any packages no packages in the model and then we do dbt build which runs all our models and then we lint our model which is successful yeah and um yeah that's it that's quite easy so if we go back to our pr we can see um okay i think cloud is still running maybe the cloud job is still running but then really your ci really helps you to see that um your changes are working as expected and once you merge this change into production you're not going to have any strange any strange data in your production so really that's really how you set up your ci job on dbt core all right so i hope you got a thing or two out of this video please don't forget to hit the like button the subscribe button and the notification bell as well thank you so much see you again in our next video bye for now